Hi everyone, welcome to the Queen's Court. Today we are joined by two special guests. Not um, one, but two. Exactly, buy one, get one free today. Which one's the free one then? Yeah, I don't know, I'm no, not going to go no, there. Nobody, nobody, <laughs> nobody's paid me, I'll check my bank account. What? No, wait, we're not getting paid? <laughs> <laughs> we're joined by the outcasts, Blake Harrison and Alexander Gray. Thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. Oh, pleasure's all yours. Yeah, pleasure is yours, I was going to say, yeah. And it's always a pleasure seeing Aston Villa top in the room, I must admit. But we've heard that we've heard Blake going to Reston then and his training in our interview with him last year. It seems to be a, a, a tradition at Christmas now to interview Blake, I think, you know, so that's quite good. Uh, but how about you, Alexander? How did you get into Reston? How did you start up and how did you train? Uh, I mean, I, I'm doing it now four years. Um, and it was a case of understanding that, you know, I, I needed to be somewhere else needed to do something else and I started with uh, the PWA back in the day um, for me uh, you know trained with uh, Tyler uh, Tyler Hawk when he was there went to um, uh, Uni Pro then we went over to you know, associations with Pride um, then went to DWA uh, which was cool uh, and then um, you know started getting on different shows from around those uh, and then I'm now with uh, with Reach Preston after you know the right choices were made earlier this year. So uh, how have you managed to trade in that in lockdown? Then I know you do unit, but uh, I mean the gyms and that being closed. How have you managed to uh, both of you? How have you managed to uh, cope with that? I'll let Blake take his first. Mine's different to his, I'm sure. Um, my my. Uh... Coach just gave me stuff to do. It was just body weight stuff, going for runs. Um, I posted some of it online and um, on Instagram. I did like an NHS wad, which was absolutely horrendous. Um, that was it, really. It was, I, I had a dumbbell, I had a, a few bits and bobs, and I just used that for, for two, two and a half, three months. Bit boring, but kept it, kept the job going, kept my fitness relatively up. I tell you what, I've seen your Instagram stuff, uh, Blake, and you look in great shape. I mean, what I saw yesterday, you lifted was it 130 kilograms or something? <laughs> I wish. Oh no, I saw you were you, look, you were doing it really well. You, you look in really good just, shape. Uh, just say yes, Blake. Just say yes. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's strong minded. Don't need to lie. We like <laughs> don't need to lie. Yes, it's true. Uh, 90 kilo, It was a heavy 90. Depending on what I'm, depending on what the movement is, I can't. I can lift certain things. That's oh, right. It was Kirsty's brother that lifted 130 kilograms. I'm oh, sorry, but Chal that. challenge accepted. All right, fine. Give me, give me, give me four months, and I'll be doing it. Oh, I'm sure you will, mate. You're, you're looking really good. How about you, Alexander? Uh, mine was, uh, you know, as you've probably seen, a change in my mental situation uh, in wrestling has changed so I used this time to adapt me and adapt my style so like I made my own weights um, you know I, I, I literally made them out of concrete um, for one um, concrete curtain poles uh, protein tubs whatever I could use to basically do the whole Blue Peter kind of you know make your own stuff um, I already had a, like a single dumbbell, but I made um, a couple of bars, not, nothing too heavy, you know, nothing as, as uh, heavy as my uh, my trusted partner can lift, but it got me through it. Um, definitely did a lot of running, um, again, a lot of body weight stuff, like the, the overall conditioning, not as much as I wanted to do. It's definitely been, um, it's definitely been that year. I think it's not even worth calling it 2020 anymore. It's just saying that year where everyone had the same situation. So, just train what you can, how you can, when you can, really. So, Blake, you've um, you've debuted some new gear during Unit Ten. Is it a case of new gear, new you? You tell me. Well, we're the interviewers. You're the interviewee, so I don't think it should be oh, us telling you. Well, um, my my question is, have I changed at all in the ring? Just well, we've not heard anybody call you a twat while you've been at Unit Ten. To be fair. But, uh, there's been nobody there to call him at all. Well, there's been a few on there, but I thought, yeah. First of all, there's no need for that. Like, I'm, I'm taking time out of my day to be here, and there's no need for calling me a twat. Well, I'm, I'm just, I'm just 
I'm just telling you, you what the Greek army were calling you. You know, it's, it's just it's factual what they yeah. were saying. I'm, saying I'm not saying we agree with it. I'm just saying one of the nicest things about not having a crowd is not being called a twat. Like, honestly, it's been amazing. It's like one thing I do not miss about the British army is them calling me that. It's been amazing. Love it. If that means no fans for a while and I can enjoy wrestling for a bit, happy days. That's me sorted. I'm sure you'll be ready for when they come back. No. <laughs> <laughs> they're just they're just a distraction that you just don't need, really, aren't they? Like, you know, how can like how can you have someone as great as Blake come out there, literally branded in the strong minded style as he is, and then have all these people come out and literally just shout abuse at him? You don't, it's, you know. it's not my fault. Like, it's not my fault. The crowd are weak and have nothing better to do, and except we're just calling me a twat. It's because they're jealous of where I am, and like they don't have it to be in the ring. But they yeah. don't. They don't say it to everybody. They don't say it to your opponents. They they're quite happy, they're quite happy to cheer them. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw something in there then. Um, yeah, I've, wrestling fans, you can love them, you can hate them, but if they're just picking on one guy, isn't that technically bullying? I'm just gonna throw that out there. You know, to, yeah, to me, that's you know. <laughs> You're just taking one person, calling them a name that you you can't actually say, like, you know, it's not like a specific name as well, right? Like, it's not like they're going out there and they're saying something like, I don't know, oh, the lanky one or the you know, the blonde one or whatever you want to, like, it's nothing factual, right? They're just picking a word and they're just essentially just keep repeating it. One, because they obviously what, don't what know any other words. I wouldn't say anything to was factual. I'm just saying the crowd are saying factual. What did I do to deserve that? Um, cheating, basically. I shouldn't yeah. Exactly. You, people know, you you have no reason to call me that. You just call me that because you like to, which is bullying. So you people are really bad for it. I'm sure I can remember, I'm sure I can remember shows where you've been bullying people and mm. hitting them from behind and that, you know. But you are encouraging kids to shout that very rude name. I know, it's, it's terrible, wouldn't it? But if you were maybe a nicer person, you might not call this. It's not my fault. It's you, like mom. Do you I'm question your life choices for being I a bit of a, a bit of a cheater? I couldn't care. I could not care less if you hate me. Part it kind of sounds like you could, though, if you're complaining about being called a twat. It's part of. No, 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 hang on. No. Well, actually, he might be complaining. About, I, I'm saying he's complaining about being bullied, and, and rightly so. Well, we've got to stamp it out somehow. But when, when, I'm sure if you were a nicer person, you know, it's, it's a two-way street, what, is what you're saying. Yes. Football's got kick it out because of racism. I won't kick it out for being called a twat. Well, well, perhaps you should suggest that to Jason and Grayson. The next time anybody calls you a twat, they kick them out. I mean, like, we also got given this name, right? We, we got given this name, the outcast. We didn't, like, meet up and go, hey, what cool name should we come up with? Like, partner, what, what should we be called? We just got told, oh, guess what? You're the outcast. And literally yeah. what you've just said is the same concept. So essentially, we are being cast out from the rest of society because we don't That's fit in with your your styles and your your what you want in life from us like we go down we go down to the reach academy we are not allowed to get changed with the other talents we are not allowed to train with the other talents we are completely outcasted from everybody else we don't get anything we have to train by ourselves even like the last few weeks of the tapings they've done i've had a singles match alexander was not allowed to be there he had a match. I was not allowed to be there. Why am I not allowed to? Why can't we're tag team partners? Why can we not be there to support our partners? Like, perhaps, perhaps they thought you would interfere in the other's match. Oh, but Jason can come out and be with his whatever his name, Jordan Sparks. Well, yeah, like, we don't, let's just clarify we don't have favorites in this situation. Everybody else gets to do it. We want to do it, and we're a legitimate tag team, we're an actual tag team. So much so they've given us a name. Again, like we have no control on the name. We were just told, this is your name. You're a tag team. We know we're a tag team. We actually can tolerate each other unlike half the other people in that building. But they all get to do it. And we just get to get what we're given. Well, yeah. we want to we come on to the tag team uh, division in a minute. But can I ask you, Alexander, first of all, uh, what, what about the change from Xander Gray to Alexander Gray? Then? I was for the benefit of everyone else's own good. Like, hands down. Like if everyone, uh, I you know I, I use the social media stuff now and again. 
if you understand what I put, great. If you don't, I don't care. But like, I put it there to give you a glimpse of the understanding about the whole gray area aspect. That's the whole point. Everything in this world, everything in society is either your purest black and purest white. Everything in between is that gray area, which I have seen in every aspect. I'm not talking just about wrestling. I'm talking about everything, right? So you take a pandemic, you lock everyone down. And, you know, most people were locked in, like, with families or friends. And they have all these Zoom meetings and these calls. And obviously, I'm, you know, I'm just me. I, I don't, I'm not worried about people liking me or hating me. I, I, I Just because I understand the differences between good and evil and the light and the dark doesn't mean that, you know, I'm partial to either one. I just know them. I understand that people get jealous of that. So, you know, it's a case of during lockdown, I was literally on my own as Xander and and Xander as you've experienced is very angry very uncontrollable like he's a paradox like he's it's it you know he's aggressive he's just there's just nothing but rage there so you put that and you lock it in a building right I'm not obviously confirming where exactly I obviously was but it was me in a, in a very small building by myself for months and you try and deal with that, that mental aspect as well as the physical rage and changes have to happen so i you know I, I i didn't have anyone to turn to so i had to understand myself how do i control this what barriers do i put in place so i can survive mm. and luckily then for everyone else especially the reach army and everyone and more specifically everyone at reach who i haven't just ripped their head off like if it wasn't for that i mean me and blake probably wouldn't get on if i didn't make that change He's the only one who understood when the, when the change happened. I spoke to Blake and I was like, dude, like this, I've done this. I've had to take that aspect and put it away. And, you know, it's locked. It's buried, right? If it comes out, then something, the world's just going to end. But he understood. Exactly. And he, he, yeah, he appreciated. He, he, he showed me some form of respect for it. Like a year ago, like it's been like years ago me and Alexander we've had our battles we've had a, we gained the respect from each other and a year, if you told me a year ago me and Alexander who's now Alexander would now be tag team it wouldn't have happened because like as he was saying he wasn't like capable of being a tag team partner because he had so much anger so much rage he, he wouldn't be able to control himself but now with this lockdown and after speaking to me about it and like we've gone back and forth able to come up together in this tie team we've now become the outcasts we need to change that and obviously we're soon going to be like one of the do dominant team in reach you've definitely got a good chemistry together i must admit yeah yeah, yeah we respect each other he's one of the few people in reach i actually respect yeah and and like when even when we first started teaming up at reach like it was a case of Let's try to decide to see what happens. We didn't necessarily really like each other at this point. We just understood each other. We respected each other. And that's grown over time to understand that, you know, he's got my back, I've got his. No one else in this world has. No one, especially at Reach, right? So yeah. it's nice to be able to actually say, you know, considering I've, you know, I, I, I've been part of um, a, a, a team before, but I've never had a partner and this is the first time someone's been willing to show me the same respect I'm willing to give back to them. And we tolerate each other. That's that's how that works. So was it the, the mutual understanding and respect that you have for each other that pushed you together as a tag team? Or was it reach and reach management themselves? I'd say it's both, like, easily. Like, the thing is, is, like, as we've said, like, already today, like, you know, we, we were cast out, like, you know, when, when we kind of showed up after the whole lockdown, part one, whatever you want to call it, it was a case of, you know, everyone else was in their little cliques, their groups, as you get in wrestling all the time, everyone's always part of these, you know, you know, you know who's in which friend circle or training circle or whatever, and they're all over there, they're all over there, and then who's the two people who were left alone to, to you know, be to be alone? We were. So we were like, well, if it's just you and me versus the world, then let's make it you and me versus the world. So it is exactly, and like we both, we I, for me anyway, I feel Alex would agree with me. We both have a chip on our shoulder because we've been in we've been in this business for a while, and for me especially, I don't feel like I've been used right, especially in reach. Like as I've seen people go on shows, I'm like, how? And I'm just sitting on the sidelines, which I really hate. 
And now together with me and Alexander, being a tag team, we're going to make Reach Management put us on shows. We're going to make them give us opportunities because they're not going to give it to us. We're going to have to literally take it from them. Hence, yeah, I don't care if you're Grayson Reeves or Jason King. At the end of the day, like I know a lot of people, you see... Um, you see someone cool, look, you know, we, we don't, obviously we don't like any other people, right? But we, we appreciate other people in the business. Like you take someone like Danny Boy Johnson, right? Danny Boy Johnson has been disrespected. We, we, we've been disrespected like there's no tomorrow, but you see the stuff with, you know, they can't even confirm to this announcer guy, this Max guy, right? They can't even confirm to him where this guy's from. Now, it's a joke. Yeah, that, that's ridiculous. Now, they say reach management, right? But they never say, oh, it's Grayson Reeves, it's Jason King, right? Because some of them like one and some of them don't like the other. I I know I don't care. And I know that Blake doesn't care. When it comes to Christmas Day in this Rumble, we're both now in it. I don't care which one I get to get my hands on. I don't care if you're the top dog. You run the you run the company or you're the bottom dog. I will I will kick your ass. Someone's getting speared on Christmas Day. I don't care who it is. That's pretty good. But you've both wrestled, wrestled in, at Unit 10 uh, in singles matches and as tag. Which do you prefer? Do you prefer working together now? Is that overtaken singles matches? I prefer it when we can do what we want. Not be, oh, you can come, but you can't. Because yeah. that's unfair. If I have a singles match and I've got Alexander in my corner, happy days. If I don't, and they can't give me a valid reason why, and it, there is no valid reason, full stop, then it's a joke. Like, end of the day, we're a team. Singles or tag, as long as one of us is in each other's corner, it's, it's all good. That's all we need. Yeah, and you, you look at um, like the biggest wrestling companies like WWE and AEW, right? When you name one tag team who, on a regular basis, isn't allowed to at least come out and support their partner in a singles match. Take someone like The New Day, right? Especially when there are three of them. At what point did you ever stop these guys coming out to support their partner? You didn't, right? But, you know, we can't do it. Do you think you need your, the other one in your corner to win then? No, not at all. It's not about it's not about what we need. Like, Why do you need each other? One, either, either, one, either one of us can win a match why, with, why? without each other. It's about have, being allowed to have the support. It's because we are not being given that opportunity like everybody else has been given. Like Blake's already said, Jason King can come out with Jordan Sparks or he can interfere in his match. We're not even allowed to be in the same building if we're not in a tag match together. Like, we got that one chance, like, really early on to, you know, when uh, Blake was in the um, Academy tournament, which we we only managed to get one opportunity between the two of us. Did I get my shot? No, but at least my partner did. As well, right? Yeah. We both should be in that. Like, again, outcasts, giving one of us the opportunity when, when we both deserve it, it's a joke. So you're quite pleased and you're both in the Rumble? Yeah, so yeah. yeah, 100%. Like, we both deserve being in the Rumble. Like, if I was in it and he was, I'd be pissed. If I was in it and he was in it, I'd be pissed. It's like, why uh, are yeah. you giving us a fair opportunity? So when, when, when Blake was announced for the Rumble and Alexander wasn't already wasn't announced at the time, were you worried, Alexander, you may not be given the chance? I, it took, I only got announced, like... Yesterday or day before, wonder, yeah. like it was, it was. I was, I was starting to think. Well, hang on a minute. This is like that Reach Academy tournament all over again. Like, like again, don't get me wrong. If my partner wasn't in it, then there would have been a problem. There would have been a serious problem. All right. If you're not going to give it to both of us because we're a tag team, fine. You can do your. You know, basically, you can be hypocrites, which is what they obviously have done. But this time around, they've actually seen some sense and. How can they, like, the, the most ridiculous thing, right? As I've already mentioned um, earlier on, um, you've got uh, Danny Boy Johnson. You've got this this Max guy, right? You've got an MC, a master of ceremonies. You've got him announced in this rumble before, I mean, obviously me. But then there's other guys, you know, I haven't seen Max Wilson announced, right? Now, again, we don't like Max Wilson, but he's a good wrestler. How do you get... How do, how do you get someone like this this little Jaguard guy or whatever Dan calls him? Just because Jason's annoyed, right? So Jason gets to throw his weight around. You're right, fair enough. You're co-owner of reach. Grayson, Grayson doesn't come out and make these silly choices. He might make other silly choices, but we'll talk about that another time. But how can you take people like... 
I mean, quite okay. I, I don't want to. I don't want to shoot ourselves in the foot here, but we've we've both been pinned in Reach Wrestling now, right? At this point, most recently by uh, Joe. Uh, I can't remember his bloody name. Costa. Joe Costa. Yeah. Joe Costa and that Dom guy. Dom. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that guy. You got this Max Jaggard guy in a rumble before any of these three are mentioned. I don't care if Joe Costa's got a broken wrist. Man up. Get in the ring. Sort it out. Max Wilson, one of the best upcoming South wrestlers like there is, hands down. Second that. And, and you've announced this other little guy. What? Uh... Does he even wrestle? I don't think so. Do you think um, if you're in the ring and he gets in, you just throw him straight out again? I might beat him up for a bit, to be fair. You, yeah, just take your time. <laughs> it's too easy. I, like, do, you know, do you know what would be quite cool, right? Do you, do you know what would be really cool is if you had the last three people in the match. Now, I've already had a chat. Um, I said a comment on social media with Danny Boy Johnson. And actually, we said it would be quite nice if it ended up with us three. Myself, Blake and Danny. You know, again, we, we like him. He's good. He, uh, you know, we, we tolerate him. He's cool. That would be quite a nice little end but there. Would you yeah. two just gang up on Danny Boy then, wouldn't you? I mean... You would expect that, but then go back and look at the triple threat between someone like uh, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, and John Cena. What happened at the very beginning? Yeah, you know, Blake and I, Blake and I understand each other. So at least if we do that, we know what's going to happen. Like you know, at the end of the day, we we all know it's every man for himself, and only one person can win it. Now, as long as it's one of us, me or Alexander, that's all that matters. I couldn't care less. So there wouldn't be Jaguar no jealousy goes, from the other one. At the end, no. that'll be bloody funny. <laughs> that would be quite funny, I must admit. <laughs> it would be very funny. See, this is the kind of bookings that reach management need to understand. Like, if you're going to put someone like Max Jaggard in a match, right? I don't care how good an announcer he is, because let's face it, he still is thinks Daniel Boy Johnson is for Swilly. I, I don't. Well, it's not. But, no, no, he's definitely not from Swilly, all right? Like, you know, until, until, until he said that, I didn't ever, never even heard of Swilly until he mentioned it, to be honest with you. You need to show Danny Boy Johnson some respect. Yeah, like, that's what like, I mean. I didn't, know he was, I didn't even know about it. Like, he, he's definitely not from Swilly. I'm not knocking Swilly, all right? Swilly is a grey area, literally, right? We won't talk about that. But the fact that Max hasn't got the common sense to actually use his own brain to understand where somebody comes from. And he just follows directions on paper. Yeah. How long do you think that guy is actually going to last in a rumble? <laughs> you, you can only follow instructions from a piece of paper and you haven't got the common sense to actually, you know, He's a run sheep. your own life. Yeah. He's but a sheep. You, you tell him what to do, where to go. go yes. That's yep. literally all he'll do. I, I, I actually, I'm, I'm throwing out there right now, candy cat match, Max Jaggard with Outcast, but even better, let's just give him a party. He can choose anyone he wants. Any partner he wants. He can pick some of the best wrestlers in the UK. Um, you know, like uh, I don't like talking nice about people, but you know, Eddie Ryan. Go get James. Go get go get James Mason. Go get Joel Redman. Go get Eddie Ryan. Go go get who you want, Max Jaggard. You want to tag with somebody, one of the good guys, one of the best wrestlers. Carry on. You crack on, but don't be messing around where you don't belong. No. Susie gets that ring, Max stiff and ball game. So, just a quick one. You're saying about wrestlers you respect, like uh, Max Wilson. I totally agree with you there. Uh, Danny Boy Johnson, he's another good wrestler. What about Omega Luke, what have you made of him so far? So far, so good. Like he keeps he keeps himself. Like you know, I've heard his name. Um, he seems to be. He seems to be. He's got that thing that you know. He's he's a, he's the social media guy, right? So. You know, we use social media now and again. Blake probably a little bit more than I do, but it, it's because he knows what he's doing with it. But this this Omega Luke guy, I th that seems to be what he's all about. So I'm a little bit worried that whilst, you know, everyone in wrestling to some level has an ego. We all do at some point. Um, even if you don't know you do, you definitely have one. Um, but I'm worried about him after he challenged the cameraman and lost to a cameraman. <laughs> that 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 uh, what was he called? Timmy? Toby? Toby, right? This this Toby guy on unit 10 the other day. He's just pinned you. He did him wrong. From the looks of that Toby guy, if he was to train, that guy could probably wrestle quite well. But you if you're gonna pick a fight with anybody and you're gonna not have an opponent and choose the cameraman and then lose to the cameraman, I'm a little bit worried about you. Me and Blake wouldn't make stupid choices like that. 
maybe Especially if we're, if we're going to talk, we're going to back it up. Maybe he should just stick to being a, a YouTube star. And I use star very lightly. <laughs> What's he got? Ten thousand followers now, hasn't he? Yeah, he's got ten thousand hmm? subs. Congratulations. I don't know. Oh, followers, cool. Who, who cares? <laughs> I don't. Ultimately, though, not just um, in regards to the Rumble, what are your goals at Unit 10? Win those tag team titles. Yeah. Like... The, fact that, the fact that we have not received a tag team title match yet is a joke. Dave and Dom, who the hell are Dave and Dom, got a tag match for the tag titles and they haven't even tagged before, I don't think. If Surely they are, though, that's got to come for you guys in the future, the, the title shot. I mean, are there really that many established tag teams in reach? Mm, there are a couple. We are you guys should be a shoe in, surely. We are the only established, with the exception of country LA, whatever. LA yeah. country. Yeah. Like, we are the established tag team here. We deserve a tag team title match. Not Dave and Dom, not Lucky Amadeus, who we, we've beaten multiple times. Like, <laughs> And I'm going to throw it out there, actually, didn't um, we sort of about the two, some of the guys that we respect in the business for their skill, their talent, right? I'm pretty sure that Max Wilson and Danny Boy Johnson teamed up and beat the guys who then got a number one contender or got the, the title opportunity. How does that work? How do you get guys who don't tag together, tag up, beat these guys, and then these guys who just lost the match get a title opportunity? How, do, how does that work? This is the point that we made earlier about being outcast and not being appreciated and respected in the business and why we have to have each other's backs because if we don't, you know, this kind of crap will keep happening. Ridiculous. Put us in the ring with Dave, with Dave and Dom. We'll smash them, like, without question, easily. They, they wouldn't stand a chance against us. Country LA, LA country, whatever, it'll be the same. Might be a little bit tougher because they're a bit bigger in style, like in height-wise. That's it. But the result would be the same. We'll, we would beat them, beat new tag champs. But so again, because we're the outcasts, reach management is not going to give us that. Don't be silly. We're probably going to have to climb ladders, roll through hoops, whatever the silly ideas they've got in their heads, just to get an opportunity. So, so do you see the House of Cards as a threat or a stepping stone one and, and your chance to become in the uh, tag champions then? And just to clarify, do you, when you say a threat or a stepping stone, do you mean us working with them? No, 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 no. As, a, as, a, as against them, you know, do you see them as a threat? Or an obstacle. An obstacle way. on your path. Like, I think at the minute we don't have to worry about the House of Cards because you've got Jason with Jordan and they seem to be far more worried about the Reach Academy title than them as a tag team. And it's just the two of them at the minute, right? So if they're going to focus on this singles belt, then how can they truly work Didn't together? Didn't they bring in that great virus guy last week, this week? Well, see how that goes. Maybe, you know, maybe you'll see more of him. And, but... and didn't, didn't they just lose their last tag match as well? Yeah. Well, they um, did. I'm not, really, at this moment of time, I'm not concerned. Me and Alex and... Um, so what's your, what's your or... record as a tag team then? Two and no. We haven't lost a tag team match. You've lost singles matches, I mean, that's that's different. But yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're not lost because, we, because because we turned because we turned up to the building again, being outcast and not being allowed to have anything that we needed or wanted to, just to you know, feel like we were accepted into this society of wrestling as as we always haven't been. Do you have a message for Lake Taylor and Country Pig then? Well, yeah, but. If, like, let's face it, at the end of the day, we want to fight them and we want to take those titles home. That's what it comes down to. At the end of the day, black and white, they're holding what we want. That's simple. That being said, as opposed to everyone else who's been involved in tag team situations, they're actually a, a decent opportunity for us. Like, that's a team that I've, I've definitely didn't expect to see at reach. And that's a team that I definitely would like to fight. Because if you look at the two members of that team, L.A. Taylor is obviously, she's like homegrown reach, like level wrestling, right? She The women's division at reach is actually impressive. Let's be honest. Let's not be completely horrible about it. 
the women's division at reach is really impressive but the fact that you've got someone like ellie taylor who she's a bit of a badass right so she's stepped up her game because the women the rest of the women's division she she needs a bigger challenge and she's got someone like uh, josh not who's hold holding like, or held sorry multiple uh titles across different wrestling businesses across the country so you put them as a tag team that's a formidable tag team so when we beat them that makes us look better simple as that you like to say more as for house of cards what are you two what are you two laughing at well when you said that what I mean, was I was more laughing at you trying to cause trouble, but, you know. I, I, I don't need to say more. Like, Alexander said it perfectly, what we want. End of the day, if you're not at reach to be a champion, why are you there? Get Absolutely. out. Yeah, like, we, we were put in that handicap match with Joey Seven, right? The handicap match with Joey Seven wasn't to win the title. It wasn't to... It wasn't to... We weren't trying to beat him. Yeah, we weren't trying to beat him. We were tasked with beating him up. That's a difference of, of you know, the situation. If we were tasked to pin him, why would we not try and try to win the match earlier? We actually just tried to hit him with different things left, right and centre because the champ is, as you've seen most recently, far more worried about other things than what he should be worrying about. He's not paying attention to the thing that is either over his shoulder or around his waist. He's not paying the belt the respect it deserves. It's, you know, that's, that's not. We don't need that belt. We want the tag belts, right? We're a tag team. But you've got him posting his videos right about Jason King, the House of Cards, and the attitude of people like Aurora. You know, all these wonderful skilled talents, and he's worried about all these people instead of the thing he's supposed to be protecting with his life. Like, what is this? Worry about Charlie Sterling on your own time, champ. Worry about the belt on your shoulder twenty four seven because everyone's coming for it. Who's not us right now? Well, if you obviously, if one of you two win the rumble, you'll be coming out everyone yourself. Damn straight we will. Mm. One of us wins the rumble. One, whoever wins the rumble will be the next academy champion. I, I promise you that. It doesn't mean we're going to stop wanting to chase the tag team belts either. That's the difference. Is because we're a tag team, we can handle the pressure of going for the tag titles. And if one of us gets the opportunity to get the singles belt, then we will take it. That's what we'll that do. That would look quite so, cool if you had all the belt, though, wouldn't it? That would look brilliant. It would be impressive. Mm -hmm. It would It would be what everyone should want as well. You know, everyone wants the underdog story, right? So when's the outcast story? Everyone's like, oh, the underdog, like Daniel Bryan, right? Daniel Bryan in WWE, he was the biggest underdog of all time. Or Kofi Kingston, right? Same situation. Boo him, cheer him, hate him, I don't care. The underdog story has been repeated and repeated and repeated. So when does the outcast story happen? When does it that everyone's like, oh, actually those two guys who like, oh, nobody likes or nobody wants to give time to or respect or let them have anything they want at all. When's the outcast story? Because when that happens, then you can rewrite the pages of history because we will take what we deserve. Okay. So Alexander, unlike Blake, you've not appeared that much on the main reach shows, but you've made an impression at unit 10 so far. So what do you think you need to do to become a regular on the main shows once things are a bit more normal? I think that the answer to your question has technically already been asked earlier. Um, where the fact that it That's seems to be well, uh, management bookings and, and, you know, again, just being outcast and not give, being given these opportunities. Like the times that I've been on a reach main show, um, at the, the, the very first time I appeared on a Reach show, I turned up to give somebody the fight that nobody else would give them. And I didn't win that match, but I still lasted longer than anybody else this guy had faced. I still took it straight to him. And that was that. The next time was a rumble. And it was very much like I got treated the same way they treat someone like PJ Jones. PJ Jones is a fantastic wrestler, right? Again, we don't like him, but we tolerate him because he, he actually has skill. He almost is treated like an outcast because everyone, like like you bully, uh, I mean, not necessarily you guys, let's not start that debate. Like people bully Blake, people bully PJ. They take, they, all they, but all they do, right, is they just take his name and change a letter. Because that's the most intelligent way to, you know, really bully someone is just take a name that they've been given or, or have, change a letter, 
and then just keep saying that one word over and over and over again because you know that's really intelligent right so you get someone like me and pj jones blake was in that rumble again it, it was very much so like, oh well, all the underdogs are kind of teaming together and well, let's get rid of the outcasts first and then k sarah sarah but yeah i just need to be given these opportunities that um some people are getting and maybe do or don't deserve so how do you go sorry blake carry on. and obviously the easiest way well it's not the easiest but the best way that both of us can get on the main shows is by winning the reach tag team titles because they they have to book us then Otherwise, like what company would not have their tag team champions on shows it'd be silly so so when we win we will be on the shows and if they're that stupid which i know they're not because they have been running reach successfully ever since it's been started they would put their champions on the shows so that's what we have to do to be on the shows so be it but i we will have to scratch and claw away to get that opportunity and we won't be letting it go when we get it sure. unlike a lot of wrestlers up and down the country you two and the rest of the Reach uh, Academy have had the opportunity through Unit 10 to wrestle during the pandemic and to be put out there. How does that feel to be wrestling? A lot of wrestlers haven't been. So this is the only time I'm going to give them props for Unit, for actually letting Unit 10 happen and giving us the opportunity. That's the only opportunity they've given us during this pandemic is us wrestling and us being a tag team. And it's been great. Getting back in the ring, it's not not obviously it's not the same about the fans, with the exception of not being called twat. That's amazing, I love it. But it's been great. A few wins under my belt, which I really needed with the help of Alexander. And now sky's the limit. We got the rumble on Christmas Day. One of us will definitely win it. Because come on, we've got better odds when we're together. And then one of us will be challenging Joey Seven for the Reach Academy title. Although, having said that, knowing our luck, you know, they're going to make one of us come in, like, number one, and the other one will come in number 20, so that it won't even then be a fair fight between us two, because it's going to come down to us two. What if you come in number then, one and two? Sorry? What if you come in number one and two? Fantastic. We will back and relax. We will li I'll literally grab two chairs, we will sit in the ring, wait 90 seconds, wait for number three, kick them out, wait for number four, kick them out sorted i hope we're wanting to be the easiest night of our lives yep um so we've seen you both at reach and dwa and uh, we've seen blake at upw um so alexander would you like to follow him there at some point in the future and um, would you also both like to go further afield to other promotions in the future yeah 100 percent um i've i've had conversations with upw in the past um, very, uh, I, I mean, UPW, really well run company. I don't see any kind of major shenanigans like I see or have experienced more recently at Reach. Um, but, you know, not, not to not reach, like uh, Blake just said, you know, that with Unit 10, they've, give, they've given opportunities to people who wouldn't have them otherwise. We got the opportunity, but then so did everybody else. That's as far as our opportunities always seem to go, you know, at most. But yeah, UPW is definitely somewhere I would like to show my face, um, especially if Blake's going to go back there. Then why would they not team us up? You know, that makes sense. I think the outcast is fitting well at UPW. I was going to say, would you like to take the tag team to let, me, let, me make, let me make this as perfectly clear. We are not a reach exclusive tag team. We are a tag team that will go anywhere. And whatever company we go to, our goal is to dominate the tag team division. So when I'm going to UPW, Alexander's going to be there. And we will dominate the brother or whatever tag teams are there. We will, we will want the gold. And if we go down to OCW or if we go further up the field of 4FW, maybe Rev Pro, whatever, wherever the, this crazy wrestling business take us, our goal will be to take the tag team titles. Would you like to have a shot at serious foul play then? You know I do. <laughs> why, why? Why wouldn't we? You know I do. Why? Why? Why wouldn't we? Because they, they're some of the they're some, they are some of the best wrestlers in UPW. On the to fight against them would be a 
a great, a great yeah. achievement. And that's after you're going after the It'll be a different fight when, uh, it, when the playing feels even, won't it? Well, really. But uh, there is a tag team tournament at UPW, isn't there, please? Mm -hmm. so, I do believe so. Yeah, that'd be quite cool. Yeah. Well, this is where UPW gets their chance to show that they're not as um, dismissive and unfair and unjust as somewhere like Reach can be and, you know, actually give us an opportunity. Like, you know, prove, prove that outcasts do actually belong in this world in some way, shape or form. Don't be hypocrites. And if we... And it wouldn't surprise me if we don't. We might just gate crash it. Interesting. Like I, Interesting. Like I keep saying, if we're, we're not going to get given these opportunities, we're going to have to make and take them. So if that's what we've got to do, so be it. And if we're going to piss a lot of people off along the way, not my problem. So do you have a message for the Reach locker room, Jason and Grayson, or anybody else, the Reach Army even, you know, going forward? I mean... <sighs> My personal one is simple. Stay the hell out of my way. Because if you keep messing us around, me or my partner, ain't gonna go down well. It's just as simple as that. As far as as far as Blake's already said as a tag team, obviously you can chuck in his own personal one as well. As far as a tag team goes, there isn't another one apart from the champs. So stop booking non-tag teams in our spots sense point made give us the opportunities we've worked hard for and we deserve because we like we we've been we've been there a lot a while not as long as a few of the others but we come we train we work our asses off and just because we're outcasts that's not an excuse not to give us the same opportunities as dave and don so to be honest though, they've um, Reach have had a good record for booking uh, tag teams before they've booked TBA, they've booked Heritage City Hitman, they've put LA Taylor and Country Pig they've together. Had they've had pretty deadly so they've had all before we came along. I mean, but now they've got you together and they've you're in a, you're getting to be an established tag team almost now, you know. We've, you've already had a few matches, but you've we've, we've had think um, what it's been what, eleven weeks hmm. unit ten's been going on, and we've had two tag matches. Just the two. That's but a you, joke. You're getting like an established tag team. You've got the feel of an established tag team. Hmm. Yeah, because it, I, I, yeah. Like I said earlier, like, I, yeah. I'm not going to, I don't want to be on a bloody record. We respect each other. We understand each other. We establish because we talk. We like, hey, okay, this is what we want to do. We understand each other. And the fact that we've only been used as a tag team on two shows is a joke. There's probably, like, um, Amadeus, he's had more tag matches than us, and he's had a different partner each time. What a joke that is. He's not, he doesn't even care about the tag division. We actually want to be a tag team. We want tag matches. Like, stop giving me singles. Give me tag. Well, hopefully, like, Jason Grace a singles up. match. Let us support our partner. Jesus. It's not that hard, is it? <laughs> joke. Right, on that note then. Thank you for your time. Um, it's, it's, it's been good. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Good. For all of us, for all of us, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take care, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. See you soon.